The Dudley Book of Cookery and Household Recipes, collected and arranged by Georgiana, Countess of Dudley, London, 1909. So for my interpretation of the recipe, I'm working with reduced quantities. So I have four ounces of sweet almond oil, 0.85 of an ounce of beeswax. It should be white beeswax or just white wax. Mine's on bleach, so my cream may have a slightly yellowish tint. For the spermaceti oil, which comes from Wales and was it seems an essential part of Victorian and Edwardian cosmetics and products, I'm using the modern equivalent, which is jojoba oil. I've got an eighth of an ounce of that. And then finally, three ounces of rose water or distilled water. And to mix it all together, an enamel pan. It's so hot and sticky today that the beeswax is sticking to the inside of the jar and it says to warm the ingredients I'm presuming over a stove it's so hot today I could probably just leave it in the sunshine but we'll see so I may end up taking it off the heat because I don't actually want to scorch anything all of the wax out yet so there are the three ingredients to be warmed and melted the almond oil, the beeswax, and the jojoba oil. For me, the beauty of this recipe is the natural ingredients. However, it does lead to a fairly short shelf life and there are no preservatives. Once cold cream was produced on a more um, wider production scale in the end of the 19th and 20th century, they used more mineral-based oils and borax um, to create a better emulsification process. And other things were added to preserve it, which increased the shelf life, takes away, to, for me, the natural beauty of it. However, what we put on our skin is deeply personal to ourselves, so this is just something I enjoy doing and in no way something I'd enforce upon anybody else. And now to gently add the rose water and work well with a spoon. Um, obviously I'm adding water to oil and I'm going to do, I'm going to add it gently as the instructions say. It doesn't say to warm it up. It doesn't say to let the wax cool. So I'll just work this as gently as possible and see what happens. Now you may notice I have completely neglected to put any rose oil or other flavouring into my cold cream. This is partly because I don't really like highly perfumed or fragranced products and my favourite way of adding a little bit of scent is to use an infused rose oil like I've made in a video previously. Um, but I didn't even do that for this, this version and I didn't put any other flavourings in but while you're at this extended mixing and beating stage this is the perfect opportunity to add an essential oil or uh, perfume oil if you wish so that was about 10 minutes of mixing i didn't whisk it because the recipe didn't say whisk it but hopefully that counted as working well with a spoon i did switch to a bigger spoon you can see now i'm going to put it into my containers obviously a sensible person would just put it into a nice sterilized pot or jar designed for cosmetics but I'm not going to do that. Here is my cold cream jar, or one of them. So this is a antique one. It obviously has no sealing capacity, so I, and it only holds a tiny amount, so it doesn't really have chance to go off. 
or spoil because you'll have used it quite quickly. So this is the bit I will use first. This is just my choice. I've been doing this for a couple of years with no real effects, but I'm not expecting anybody else to do that. I seem to have a vast quantity of these pots. So we'll just spoon it in. The new home cookbook 1911 cold cream makes a very large quantity so I've cut it down to a quarter of the amount this time. So we're starting with one ounce of sweet almond oil and then half an ounce of wax. Oh, once again it said white wax, I'm using my beeswax. Half an ounce of rose water, I'm gonna run out of space. Once again, it calls for spermaceti wax, but I'm using half an ounce of jojoba oil and half an ounce of cocoa butter. And the instructions are very brief on this one. This time you place um, your pan with some water in it on the hob and you put your ingredients, starting with the oils and waxes, in another dish on top of there to melt them gently. And unlike the other recipes, the water goes in at the same time this time. And because when I made this recipe before, although it just says to stir, I have my whisk standing by because it required a lot more agitation than I expected. All the ingredients are now melted, so we'll just take the bowl out the pan. And so the instructions simply say to stir until cooled. Oh, I really should use a wooden spoon for this for anyone who doesn't like the sounds of metal upon metal. When I tried this recipe before, it actually went to a consistency like rubber and then horribly separated and I ended up adding quite a bit more distilled water to try and turn it back to a nice consistency. And it did. Unfortunately, the side effect of that was that it also went mouldy incredibly quickly. I've never had any of my cold creams go mouldy before. The other factor to that though may have been that rather than using beeswax, I used emulsifying wax and because that's a chemical based wax, it may have changed the composition. So this has taken about 30 minutes for it to be as cool as it's going to be on a hot day like today. So I don't think it's gonna change anymore. It's a completely different texture to when I've made it before. So either I did something wrong last time or I've done something wrong this time, I'm not quite sure. So. Obviously you can use a spatula or spoons or some other tool to get as much of the cold cream out of the pan. Um, I also then usually slap whatever's left in the bowl on my face, my arms, hands, feet, anyone who happens to be passing through the kitchen before I then, I then wash them out in order to get the most out of it. There's no one here today, so I shall just be wearing a lot of cold cream. 
what I don't recommend doing after you've slapped it on your face is cleaning out the fire grate, which is what I have did once before. And obviously all the cold cream acted in exactly the way it is meant to act with face powder. And all the ash from the grate sort of stuck to my face, so I looked like a Victorian urchin. So, all that's left is to seal this one. And now I've got a controlled sample in a lid to see how it keeps and one to try and test and I've done the same with the other cold cream as well and um, we'll see how they behave. Uh, and now for the slightly arduous cleaning up process as you've probably gathered if you've watched any of my videos I don't have a dishwasher so I'm gonna wash them up in my sink I'm obviously washing them up in a bowl so I can discard the water outside rather than putting the oils and wax and emulsifying ingredients down the down the drain because that's not going to be good for anybody. Just do a little review of what I've made today and talk you through it. So in here we have the Edwardian recipe for cold cream. So we have the almond oil, rose water, beeswax and jojoba oil cold cream. And here we have the almond oil, rose water, jojoba oil, beeswax and cocoa butter cold cream. So these are new, these are today's, and these sealed pots are more of the same. And over here we have some previous cold creams I've made. This one here is very similar to this one, only it's called Galen's cold cream, implying that it's a very ancient recipe, and that uses olive oil rather than almond oil as the main oil. And I've been using that most recently. And in here I have a cold cream made of coconut oil as the base oil, which I couldn't find any recipes for that online, and that's possibly because it, coconut oil is not suitable for this sort of recipe. Um, and I have also been using that, and I will save my reviews of them until after I have tried both the traditional cold cream and the cocoa butter cold cream. And once I have done that, I will let you know which ones I like, how they behave, what they do, and what I think of them and the recipes, and possibly maybe some further samples to try, um, or recipes to make from. So I shall leave you with that for now. When the dog has stopped having the loudest drink of water and bowl lick on the planet, I'll start. Can you go outside now? I'm going to make a noise somewhere else. Hello. Yeah, don't knock the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Go outside now. Go on. Good dog. <laughs>